there are some reflections on the solemnity of Christ the King for this year. I would imagine that every adult who is hearing these words has heard the phrase, ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's a legal principle holding that a person who is unaware of the law may not escape liability for violating that law merely because one was unaware of its content. The Holy Gospel tells us that at the end of a person's life, and then at the end of all human lives when Jesus returns, there is a judgment. We call the first judgment individual the particular judgment, and the second one the general or last judgment. There is a separation into sheep and goats. The goats become cabrito for Satan and his minions, while the sheep are themselves served by our Lord at the eternal banquet of heaven. Ah, you might say, that's just not fair. After all, I've heard in many sermons that sheep and goats are perhaps the stupidest mammals there are. It's not fair to roast some and toast the others, is it? Well, maybe so if we were actually discussing farm animals. But we're not. Ezekiel and Jesus and other prophets use the pastoral analogies of sheep and goats and shepherds to show in earthly terms the depths of the crazy love God has for us. Compared to our Lord, yeah, we really are like cattle in our understanding, our devotion, our ability to take direction. But we are human beings made in the image and likeness of God. We've all heard that the two rules of life that we must follow are to love God above all things and love our neighbor, even our enemies, as ourselves. Ignorance of that simple dual law is no excuse. Even non-Christians have heard of it. The promise is simply awesome. We who have been baptized in Christ, if we die in the state of grace, the state of love, we will be eternally united in Christ. And when he returns to be acclaimed as king of the universe, he will even reconstitute our mortal bodies into immortal bodies. What we are now, is that as I age, I feel slipping away a little more each day, what we are now will be changed, transformed into the perfect image of Christ in me and every one of you. Each of us will be unable to describe how we will look and think and feel in what St. Paul elsewhere calls spiritual bodies, and we will be swept up into the fullest human unity with each other and with the Blessed Trinity in a kind of cosmic bridal party with Mary and the saints that will never, ever end. That's if we live and die in love. But what about the goats, you may ask? How can an all-loving God send them to eternal damnation? Well, let's consider what the Catechism says is the definition of hell. It's the state of definitive self-exclusion from communion with God and the Blessed. Notice, self-exclusion. That is also its greatest torment, its most horrible punishment. Oh, what about the fire and the brimstone and devils poking us with pitchforks and all the rest? Well, they will be awful, but not as awful as the everlasting feeling of having screwed up, of having every joy, especially the vision of God, freely available to us during our life, and turning away from that joy, from that divine union. You see, God doesn't really send anybody to hell, does he? Anyone who ends up out of union with God has excluded himself or herself from divine union. Some have sp spent their lives habitually seeking power over others, and I don't just mean corrupt politicians and judges. You can attain power over another just by knowing secrets they wouldn't like others to find out. Some of the goats addict themselves to illicit sexual activity, and they refuse to give it up even at the expense of eternal separation. 
That's why I caution everybody to shred all the pornography and abandon subscription services that get you into those websites. And I mean even things like Netflix. You know the Ten Commandments. Three of them are about loving God. Seven are about loving our fellow human beings. The beauty of the divine plan is that God wants every one of us to be in union with him forever to hear those words, Come, blessed of my Father. That was the plan from the beginning. When our first parents messed up and told God no, he continued to say yes to us. So much so that God the Father sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And when the possibility, through faith in the sacraments, of eternal union and resurrection, so tell the story to everyone you know. Encourage each other to pay the little prices needed to stay with our Lord so that we can be in his flock forever.